I'm proud to be a Fuapa farmer because we have big uh, divine chocolate company in London. We like the company too much because they help farmers in Ghana. Yeah. Cocoa farmers in Ghana and a chocolate company in the UK are joined together in a special model for ethical business. We can only achieve the mission of improving the lives of cocoa farmers by actually running a profitable company. The more chocolate that we turn over, the more cocoa we buy from them, the more they benefit from it. In this unique situation, poor farmers in Ghana can influence executives in London, which paves the way for better working relationships between Europe and Africa. The whole concept is to bring development down to the farmers in their country so that they can empower themselves economically, politically, socially, culturally. As managing director of Divine Chocolate, Sophie Tranchel is running a company that's making half a million pounds each year. It's tough trying to stay afloat in an industry that's dominated by massive international companies. But Divine is very different from the standard business model of a results-driven, profit-making company. Divine Chocolate is a social enterprise. That means it's a mission-driven business. And so what we are first and foremost is a chocolate company, which sort of the name gives it away. Um, but our mission is to improve the lives of cocoa farmers in West Africa by establishing a dynamic brand in the UK market, which will then put the farmers higher up the value chain. In the remote but extremely fertile forests of Ghana, Daniel Apiakubi is one of these cocoa farmers. He earns around $2 a day from the sales of his crop. And most of the villagers he works with I've never tasted a bar of chocolate before. Cocoa farming is not easy. Sometimes you can face many problems. Even when, when cutting, when plucking the cocoa, you can see a big snake or if you can be damaged. It's very, very, very hard work. It's very tedious. Very hard. Daniel is a member of a farmer's cooperative called Coapa Coco. Everyone in his village society works together to harvest each other's crops which increases productivity and leads to higher revenues for his whole village. That uh, cooperative is a good thing for me because we are, two, we are, uh, we are so many. So if we go to a pe one person's farm, within one day we finish all the work. If I and my wife are doing this work, it will take us almost two weeks or three weeks. That's why we have come together so that we are helping ourselves. Kuapa yeah. Coco has 45,000 farmers in 1,300 village societies across Ghana. Together, they grow and export around 35,000 tons of cocoa beans each year to Europe and the developed world. In total, that's about 1% of the world's entire supply of cocoa. Emmanuel Arthur is one of the company's senior executives and he earns around $12,000 per year, which goes a long way in Ghana. And as he explains, he sits on the board of an organisation that has a totally unique relationship with the European chocolate industry. It is unique for a company in Ghana to own shares in, the, in a UK company. But what is even more unique is the fact that ordinary farmers, cocoa farmers, are the owners or, or are the shareholders of that company. That means they have a real say in how the company is run. They have seats on the board, so they have access to all the papers and all the decision making. They have influence how the product is marketed and then they get a share of the profits. So far the farmers have received three dividends, which is when a company pays out a share of profits to its shareholders. As the first dividend, they all decided to take a token payment of $1 per farmer. 
The second was spent on providing all farmers with machetes, the crucial tool of their trade. And the third was spent on expanding the company to the American market, which they hope will make for higher revenues and more dividends for them in the future. Once the fresh cocoa beans have been dried on the farms, they are taken to the village recorder for quality control and weighing. Here in this village, the recorder's name is Augustine Cousy. To certify the dryness, I wish I would break it, the, 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 the beans. To certify any farmer who brings his cocoa to the shell. I wish to take example to see it. the cocoa is well dry. If it's not well dry, I will ask the farmer to send back the cocoa to his to the house and prepare it again before he send it to the shell. The farmers rely on recorders like Augustine to weigh their cocoa correctly so they receive a fair price for their crops. I can assure you that you have a very, very good skill because some of the companies actually and well, I'm not, I'm not saying we are, we are the best, but I can say that we, Kuapa Kuski, is a very good company. Uh, olden time, when we sold our cocoa to other companies, they cheat us, uh, weighing by scale adjustment and other so forth and so on. But as Kuapa, we have free scale. So uh, uh, when a farmer comes and he sees what is going on, he became very interested, so every time he brings the cocoa to Kuapa because there is no cheating. Since Augustine is appointed by farmers like Daniel, it is in his interest to keep his scales well balanced. If he doesn't, he'll be voted out of his job, which means taking a pay cut from four down to two dollars a day. Back in London, the team are working tirelessly to keep revenues coming in. We're um, doing really well on Twitter. If you type in chocolate into Twitter, then you find that we are number five on the searches. So that is fantastic. One of their most important activities is marketing to maintain their presence in the minds of consumers and keep pace with the competition. An MD on a, in a small company sort of does nearly everything, I think. Um, and certainly I'm no, no different in that respect. You've got to make sure that your marketing works and that people have heard of the product so that they can go into the shops and buy it. You've got to make sure that the sales team work and that you're managing to optimise the sales opportunities. And the team have one very important advantage to boost their sales figures. Their product carries the Fair Trade seal of approval. Where, where Fair Trade has had a big success with big companies in bananas and in coffee and in chocolate, they've actually not had a big success in tea. So none of the big. Many of the products that we enjoy in this country, such as tea, coffee, cocoa, fruit, cotton, um, are produced by farmers in the developing world and they're not paid a great amount for what they actually do and what they produce. The Fair Trade system is all about fair play where Western companies offer a better deal to producers in the developing world. In Ghana, farmers are paid a guaranteed minimum price for their produce, and there are harsh penalties for any companies that aren't playing by the rules. Fair trade companies also offer what's called a social premium. For every tonne of cocoa sold, Coapa Coco receives $150 to spend on facilities like schools, health clinics and water wells so that farmers and their families can have a better standard of living. In so certain countries we've seen farmers leaving their farms in droves because they can't make enough to survive um, and ultimately if, if companies want to ensure that they can still source their products then they need to invest in the communities that are producing them. Fair trade is also a way for large companies to make sure that they get the highest quality raw materials. This seal shows that this cocoa has been certified by the quality control people. So after they have tested the cocoa and see that the cocoa is, the beans are good, it's one of the best cocoa in the world. You can even chew it raw because 
It tastes good. More and more companies are joining the fair trade movement and now the chocolate giants Nestle and Cadbury have announced that they're going fair trade as well. Most of you might know Cadbury because um, it was first established in Bourneville in Birmingham and now we operate in 60 countries across the world and uh, 45,000 people work for Cadbury and last year just to give you an idea of our uh, financial size our revenues were 5.4 billion pounds. On average, we sell about 300 million bars of Cabri Dairy Milk um, a year, so, and, and they all carry the fair trade mark. So um, it's great news that lots of new consumers will now be able to easily buy fair trade and, and support the fair trade movement. Our USP is that we have an amazing range of fantastic chocolates and that we're farmer owned. We're also fair trade. One of the things we'd set out to do when we started 10 years ago was to change the way the industry works so that farmers could get some more of the benefits. So we're delighted that Cadbury's has made this change to Cadbury's Dairy Milk. So they've only changed one of their products. We'd love to see them change everything because that would obviously deliver more benefits to farmers. And certainly we feel as if um, you know, Cadbury's has got a way to go before they're putting farmers on the board and sharing the profits with them. This is just the beginning of our journey. We've chosen to take our biggest brand, Fair Trade. We haven't taken a niche brand, Fair Trade. We've gone with our mainstream chocolate bar. And actually in the UK, that's 300 million bars a year. So it's a, a pretty uh, sizable amount of chocolate. And we're actually tripling the amount of cocoa out of Ghana that's Fair Trade now. Despite the climate of the UK chocolate market, these changes can only benefit Coapa Cocoa's farmers as they supply fair trade cocoa to Cadbury as well. Yeah, there is an economic benefit because the fair trade market is expanding. You know, last year Cadbury announced that it was going fair trade with one of its uh, popular uh, uh, chocolates in the UK. This has increased the volumes of Kwapa Cocoa especially. And last year we sold 7,000 tons. It is likely that this year we may sell more than the 7,000 tons. This economic benefit can only mean one thing for farmers, business expansion. The real profits to be made in the cocoa industry are in processing the bean by grinding and producing cocoa powder and cocoa butter. Coapa Cocoa have already expanded their interest to the American market, but now perhaps it's time to look at production closer to home. Ghana is not uh, processing a lot of the cocoa, but the situation is changing. And now we are getting companies into Ghana which are processing cocoa. Last month, ADM Cocoa opened the factory in Kumasi here to process cocoa and export the butter, the liquor, and the powder to uh, outside Ghana. Companies like ADM grind their cocoa in Ghana to make it easier to export and the money follows the product back to the developed world where big organisations like Cadbury have been in business for over a hundred years. But could it be possible for companies in Ghana to start manufacturing themselves so that people like Emmanuel and Daniel can increase their own salaries and ensure a larger slice of the profits from their own cocoa? I think you will see more grinding happening in Ghana um, and one of the reasons those fa so many factories have been built in the last five years is because there is a real potential to increase yield of Ghana, so to actually grow more cocoa, have more cocoa and therefore there is a potential to really grow the grinding capacity. Who knows, maybe in future Kwapa Cocoa as a strategic investment will say that they are going to invest in a processing plant which will, proce which will allow them to process their beans to give to our company in the UK to manufacture chocolates for us. It's not within their reach. It can be possible. Papa, papa, papa. Papa, papa. Papa, papa.